Hello, my name is Yari Kim, and I'll be presenting about the BioPure Corporation case analysis. So, founded in 1984 by Carl Rarsch and David Jodelson, BioPure Corporation is a biopharmaceutical firm that specializes in the field of blood substitutes and was in the process of launching two associated products since early 1998, the Oxyglobin for veterinary market and Hemopure for human market. The development of such blood substitutes were vital since the mid-1950s due to the increasing human blood demands and supply shortages for blood transfusions. In the meantime, BioPure's management team had to decide on how they were going to manage the launch and distribution of oxyglobin. This decision case analysis presentation will be structured through a proven state model in order to introduce the recommendation in a more objective manner to provide adequate attention to each decision options. Like mentioned before, there are two decision options indicated within the case study. The first option was to postpone the release of oxyglobin until after Hemopure uh, was approved by the FDA and is fully established in the marketplace. This was supported by the Vice President for Human Clinical Trials, Ted Jacobs, since introducing a lower price oxyglobin would cause an impractical price ex expectation for Hemopure. The second option was to launch oxyglobin immediately and procure initial revenue and market benefits. This was supported by Andy Wright, the Vice President for Veterinary Products, since he believed that oxyglobin would provide the company with initial revenue to later launch Hemopure. He believed that it would be a good opportunity to test the blood substitute product in the market. Also, in this case analysis presentation, the two options will be addressed and critiqued under three criteria. The supply and demand of human and animal blood substitute, the product statuses of oxyglobin and hemopure, and the market structure and its competitiveness of the two products. So, for critique of decision one, basically postponing oxyglobin launch, um, there was a donated blood shortage in hospitals and blood banks at the time due to uh, because people feared the risk of acquiring bloodborne diseases since mid 1980s and also there were, the donated blood um, had short expiration dates so up to maximum of six weeks and also it had to be refrigerated there were also increased demand for alternative solution because there were like around approximately 500,000 annual trauma cases requiring blood transfusion at the time. At the same time, there are limitations in donated red blood cells because of blood typing and cross-matching complications, as well as um, there was deficiency in oxygen carrying ability of red blood cells over time. When we look at the Hemopure product status, Hemopure was still undergoing phase 3 clinical trials under FDA approval process, and there are possible potential two competitors within the human blood substitute market. They are Baxter International and Northfield Laboratory, and both companies uh, propose similar price range and expected release dates. While Baxter and Northfield had uh, larger manufacturing facilities, um, BioPure's Hemopure had slight competitive edge over the other two products because of its origin as cattle blood and its convenient storage condition and it had a lower procurement cost. To critique the second decision, which is immediately launching oxyglobin. You could first look at the veterinary uh, market structure. The veterinary market structure in the United States in 1995 consisted of roughly 150,000 small animal veterinary practices, while 95% of those practices revolved around routine treatments on infections, chronic anemia, and simple traumatic incidences 
only 5% of the remaining practices were associated with emergency or specialty care that required a blood, blood transfusion. There were also limitations within uh, of the veterinary blood supply due to lack of donor animals and animal blood banks. But there was a clear demand for more accessible veterinary blood supply. Since only 2.5% of 800 acute blood loss cases in 1995 received a blood transfusion, and 84% of veterinarians reported their frustration regarding the blood transfusion alternatives available in the marketplace. In addition, there was no efficient blood typing and cross-matching system within the animal blood transfusion processes. Oxyglobin will be attracted to not only veterinarians, but also consumers, since consumer service surveys indicated that pet owners were positive to try new alternatives as well as pay more for the product if the animal condition was deemed critical. When we look at the oxyglobin's product status, um, it had just received final FDA approval for market release, so basically there are no competitors in the animal market and they're the sole provider of the animal blood substitute. Also, it will take additional two to five years for competitors to enter the market, um, according to the case study. As a result, based on the clear demand for a better alternative for animal blood transfusion as well as the existing advantages in the animal blood substitute market, Barper should immediately launch oxyglobin in order to secure its initial revenue and benefits. Apart from all the benefits and advantages fixed within the product mentioned in the previous section, Barper needs to assess its production and distribution capabilities. Biopur only has a single manufacturing facility and only one product could be produced at a time. So it is practical to release and manufacture oxyglobin first to accommodate the production of Hemopur after its approval from the FDA. If the launching of oxyglobin fails or there are shortfalls with its revenue, Biopur still has an additional $50 million um, dollars acquired from a recent round of capital venture financing. This capital is enough to support Biopur's operations for another two years, which by that time, Hemopur will be ready for its release. Most importantly, there is no guarantee that Hemopur will pass the FDA approval process. It is still undergoing phase 3 clinical trials where rejections could occur at any point of the trial. In fact, the case study noted that there were several high-profile product failures in the mar marketplace at that time. Also, you can't ignore the high competition within the human blood substitute market mentioned in previous sections. The case study stated that the primary goal of BioPure was the development of human blood substitute. As a result, launching oxyglobin for veterinary use does not directly align with BioPure's primary objective. Also, a veterinary product with presumed lower sales and value might not prove to be more attractive to investors compared to a human product. In fact, there is a possibility that initially launching oxyglobin may jeopardize the potential of Hemopure. But to counter these advantages, um, launching oxyglobin first could indirectly address the primary goal of Biopur by providing the additional revenue acquired from the oxyglobin sales to successfully launch Hemopure. Launching oxyglobin first could also bring about better marketing and distribution designs and strategies for Hemopure's launch. Also, if there are shortfalls introducing, um, introduced during the release and distribution process of oxyglobin, Barper could learn and develop a mitigation plan for the Hemopure launch. Also, to generate the most revenue from both products, the marketing team should effectively differentiate and introduce the two products as uh, two independent products targeting two different populations. We know that price expectations are different between human products and animal products due to different levels and values of need. Since targeting population is different for both products, the impact of oxyglobins pricing on human peers' potential is still questionable. 
Since it is more beneficial to immediately launch oxyglobin, Barper should introduce oxyglobin with the price of $200 for consumers and $100 for the providers based on the veterinarians and pet owners survey on the willingness to try oxyglobin, which is indicated on the tables on the right side of the slide. For short-term planning, Barper should utilize regional distributors and target larger practices in order to generate highest sales and accessibility with the current production capacity while decreasing distribution cost. Also, they should target especially emergency practices since 75% of primary care practices transfer their major surgery and severe trauma cases to emergency care facilities. For long-term planning, uh, Barper should expand its production facility when its oxyglobin and hemopure was are successfully released and established in the marketplace. This is to accommodate the larger production capacity of both oxyglobin and hemopure products simultaneously. Moreover, Barper should transition from its regional distributors into national distributors when the company expands its production capacity. Overall, launching oxyglobin first will be a good stepping stone to introduce Hemopure. Um, this is it for the presentation. Uh, please, if you have any questions, um, leave a comment or in the discussion area. Thank you.